Uh, Dr. Strom, you mentioned on as far as job creation, obviously focusing on uh, those high growth uh, areas or those areas, I guess they're going to explode for lack of a better term. What sectors right now, um, if you can? P picking winners is always a dangerous term. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, but certainly the... Uh, Especially the around here. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, you know, but certainly the high, the, the high technology sectors, the, the life sciences, the biological sciences are, are the key areas where there's potential for high growth. Uh, those also require a, a much longer gestation period in many cases and, and, and much more concentrated uh, research and, uh, and kind of combining the, the, the kind of scientific research that goes on in the academic community uh, with the kind of uh, entrepreneurial and commercialization capabilities uh, that many organizations have, including, um, uh, in, including some, some incubators and, and, and other organizations as well. So the... Uh, uh, so the key is really the, um, uh, the, the industries and, and in some cases uh, geographic clusters as well as, as, well as industries. And uh, uh, so those, those are probably the two most important factors. Which in all those areas obviously take a lot of capital too. To yes, yes, both, both intellectual capital, both, both human cap intellectual capital and financial capital. Um, Mr. Linder, on, it, I'm fascinated by the whole angel uh, investor uh, idea and you mentioned, is it normal practice, and I'm just, uh, out of curiosity, um, is it normal practice to always sit on the, the board? Obviously, if your your firm has a stake in it, you want to have some, uh, I mean, how much, are there firms out there or companies out there that you see that you just give funding to, or do you always provide uh, uh, mentoring, I guess you might say, or, or help, or kind of oversee everything, sitting on the board and, and moving forward? And I'd also be very curious on how you pick. And you know what what goes into that process because you're risking you know risking dollars. You obviously want to pick the uh, try to pick the winners anyway, the ones that have the most potential. Thank you very much, Congressman, for asking me that question. Um, uh, first of all, I think the, the the straight out answer is we never make an investment from our fund, from our angel fund, where we don't either take a seat on the board or act as an observer to the board. Some of our members don't want the liability of board seats. Mm -hmm. But there is never a case where we make the investment and don't do that. Uh, some of our, our, our members are more active, some are less active, depending on the strength of the board, uh, the strength of the board itself. Um, and um, uh, we, um, I think, uh, I want to point out, too, that um, this year, which was a bad economic year for everybody, uh, we didn't really miss a beep in our angel investing. Uh, we've invested as many deals this year as we did in any deal. So I think, uh, I think our field is, is, is very, very healthy at, at this point in time. Um, I don't think I addressed your second question. What was that, Congressman Graves? Well, I was just, you know, as far as making the determination, who, yes. you know, how you, sure. you, I mean, do they come with you a very, obviously, a very detailed business plan you probably want to know? I mean, I'm just curious on how. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, a, in a way, sometimes it's a mixed bag. Some things, they come with very detailed business plans. Sometimes they come with a couple pages worth of summary. We never read more than the summary anyway. Uh -huh. um, and uh, I think the key for us usually in a presentation by an entrepreneur is uh, very subjective. It's our, our view of how we feel we can relate to this entrepreneur because everybody's got a great idea. Everybody's looking for money. And if I could pick one point out that we were discussing earlier before the hearing started, and that was uh, many of our people try to look and see if we believe the entrepreneur is coachable. Because if everything's going fine, it's not a problem. But if the business gets in trouble, will they listen? So that, that's really, I think that's the, the first thing we look for in, in reviewing a business plan and talking to the entrepreneur. Well, I think it's, it, I, I love the idea that this is, you know, obviously, you know, in, in a time when it's hard to find capital mm -hmm. uh, in many cases, and particularly with the, you know, regulators requiring more of the banks, which means the banks have got to require more of the, uh, the folks that are looking for capital, but I think this is fantastic. I mean, you got a good idea, um, you know, you can, and you work hard at it, um, you're going to be able to find uh, investment dollars out there or capital to work with. Out of curiosity, what's your uh, success approximately? I never measure it, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very hard because uh, I think I would say that in the 15 years I've been doing it, uh, all I'll say to you is I'm, I'm cash flow positive and cash flow positive enough for my family not to rise up against me. But it's very hard because you, a lot of the deals really 
just get lost along the way. Uh -huh. uh, so I don't do it for fun, uh, but it's uh, it's really hard to measure the ROI sometimes. Thank you for asking that question. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Mr. Bright. 